So, uh, we want to make the phases of the moon in Blender. There are tutorials on how to make the moon in Blender um, all over YouTube. Really easy to find. The ones that I learn from and that inspire me and uh, will reference in this tutorial are from CG Matter, uh, Pink Pocket, and Mr. 3D. And there are links to all three of those in the description. Uh, let's get started. So the NASA Scientific Visualization Studio has released to the world a CGI moon kit. Here we go. These color and elevation maps are designed for use in 3D rendering software. Well, that's good news because that's exactly what Blender is. They are created from data assembled by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter Camera and Laser Altimeter Instrument Teams. So uh, the NASA's LRO, uh, Lunar Recon Orbiter, shot around the moon and got all these pictures and this elevation data and then they composite it together to create the whole moon surface, which is amazing. Now, this is essentially a flat surface, but don't worry about that because the displacement right here, this is what is going to give our uh, the surface of our moon depth, you know, for craters and such. Here we go. And we can read about that right here. The displacement map, also known as a height map or elevation map, was taken directly from the latest as of spring 2019 gridded data products of the Lunar Orbiter Laser Altimeter Instrument Team, or LOLA for short. Lunar Orbiter Laser Altimeter. Lola. Uh, data is archived. And this is, again, this is this is a gift from science to the world, okay? Everyone has access uh, to these files, and everyone can make their own moon, which is awesome. So thank you, NASA, and thank you to the American taxpayer. Uh, we appreciate that. So once you've downloaded the color map and the displacement map, the height map, the elevation map, all the same thing, and which which ones you download it's going to be up to you do you have a lot of free space on your machine do you have a really fast graphics card or are you working from a laptop with a cpu let's jump into blender and let's delete the default cube we will shift a to add a uv sphere and then we're going to come over here and we're going to double the number of segments that's important if we zoom in all we're doing is uh, Hit, scrolling our middle mouse wheel out, scrolling our middle mouse wheel in. Uh, we're going to double the number of segments here to 64. And you can see we've created more geometry. And now we're going to double the number of rings here to 32. And we've created more geometry right there. Okay. Now we're going to shade this smooth to make it, well, smooth. So we're going to right click on our mouse and ju it's just right there for us. Shade smooth. Okay. Now I'm going to come up here into our collection panel and I'm going to rename the sphere moon, okay? Because it's we we want to get into the habit of naming our layers. That's why that's that's just good practice. Okay, now that we've done that, you can up here we have different workspaces, okay? So this is our this is this is our, our main 3D workspace up here. It's called a layout. What we want is shading right here. Uh, we tab into the shading workspace. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We're just going to uh, shift and middle mouse click. Just if you want to line this up, which you can. Now, down, we're going to come down here. Okay, We're going to add a new material by clicking new. And it pops up right here. Okay. Now, to move around this workspace right here uh, is all middle mouse button. Okay, so if you click and drag, you're just gonna have a hard time. But if you middle mouse button, you can you can move. And now we're gonna connect. This is a node right here. We're going to connect the types of nodes to create our 3D piece. Now we're ready to roll. Let's jump back into NASA for more for some more directions. Within 3D animation software, an object like the moon begins as a simple geometric shape. In this case, a sphere. Okay, that's exactly what we did. Look at this, boom. In our 3D animation environment, we begin with a simple geometric shape, in this case, a sphere. Okay, we got it. Now, what are we, what are we gonna do right now? If you've known me long enough, you know I love three things. The Declaration of Independence, the entire canon of Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band, and saving your work. So everybody hit Control S 
and save your work. Now what's NASA have to say? Texture maps, like the ones on this page, are used to add detail to the model. The color map tells the software how to paint the surface, and the displacement map tells it how to add the shape details that define the lunar terrain. Lunar just means moon. Lunar is a fancy word for mooner. And without them, the moon model is just a smooth monochrome ball. That's, that's what we have right here. Boom, smooth monochrome ball. So we're going to paint the surface with our color map, and then we're going to add the illusion of depth with our displacement. So I'm gonna zoom back out. We're gonna take flat rectangular surfaces and wrap them onto a spherical plane. Okay, so what we've done is we've added a material. This is just default. You can call it whatever you want to, okay? I'm gonna call it Lunar, okay? Nice, I'm gonna hit enter, lock that in. So this is my material called Lunar, and your roughness is a 0.5. You can keep that a 0.5. I'm gonna make it 0.65 because it appears to be social convention, so I'm gonna run with it. Okay, now it actually gets pretty cool. I'm gonna click and drag this over here. I'm gonna let go, and then I'm gonna click over here. Okay, Shift A, the menu pops up. We click to search, and now we wanna search for image texture. Okay, that's right there. So that's one way to do it. If you wanna go shift A, if you don't wanna search and you just wanna go texture, image texture, that's another way to do it. But some people like to search and some people like to find it. It just, you know, it just, dep it depends on you, man. Now you can see we got yellows and yellows. This is just Blender being awesome. So we thank you for that. Making sure to tell us what needs to connect to what else. A green doesn't go with a purple because a purple is not green, but a green does go with a green because green is green. Um, okay, and here you got color and base color. We're gonna connect that because we got yellow and yellow. Now, this base color just eliminated here. It's no longer on the you know the main lunar principal BSDF uh, shader. It is moved over to our image texture. This node, this whole node here, has connected to and replaced this little node, which is a part of a collection of nodes. Okay, you with me so far? I hope so. I hope you're with me so far. Now that we're here, we're gonna click open and let's go find our NASA moon data. I'm gonna click open and just like that, take a look. It maps onto our sphere. So what was just a simple geometrical shape is now the moon. There's an accurate moon color map on this thing, on this son of a gun, which is really kind of cool. Right, so look at this. So here's your color map. I'm just zooming out, zooming in, and here's your moon, right? All the moon is moving around this. So that's how you take a flat rectangular piece of uh, pixel data and wrap it onto a, an oblate spheroid in Blender, which is really kind of cool. I just tapped one right there, that's why I said. So this is uh, three inside view, one in front view. I just kind of, I wanted to have a, an idea of where I was, okay? Everybody hit Control S to save your work. Okay, now we gotta bring in our, our displacement node, which is a little, just has a few more steps, okay? So bring this principal uh, BSDF up. We're gonna take our material output. We're just gonna click and drag it. All I'm doing is clicking and dragging, okay? Simple as that. Um, I wanna come back over to my image texture and I can hit Shift D to duplicate it. And now I'm just, moving it away and I've created another image texture. This is obviously for the displacement uh, image texture. Okay, the, the elevation map, so to speak. So you can X out of that and then go open and find your elevation map, which would be right here, okay? Um, but it is a displacement map, so we have to send it through a displacement node, okay? Uh, if you look here, you're gonna see purple and yellow, so we can't connect these two. We kind of need to, but purple here has to go to a purple. So let's search, shift A, search for displacement. Shaboom, and just like that, there's my purple, okay? So when I bring a color map into the height of the displacement map, because that's what the, this is, here you go, here's your height, right? Your, your elevation map. And then I'm going to take my displacement and connect it up here. Now, in theory, look at that. 
and we have some height. We have some form on our shape. Our moon is really cratery. Okay, so now let's go into uh, rendered mode. Viewport shading rendered. You can see it's a little much here. We're going to bring this down a little bit over in cycles. So come over here to our properties panel. And we want to click on rendered properties, render engine, EV cycles. Okay. And then you saw how that was kind of grainy right there. It's because it's on CPU. And then the feature set, let's turn on experimental and ride the lightning. We come down to the materials tab. We scroll down to settings. We scroll down to displacement and we go displacement and bump. Okay. Okay. So now come over to your displacement and uh, do it yourself. Okay. You can use this now to create how much uh, of an effect it has. And we're going to go 0.06. All right. From there, we want to add a subdivision surface modifier. So we're going to click this wrench right here, add modifier, subdivision surface modifier. And then if we do an adaptive subdivision, we get even more geometry. Okay. So that is essentially our moon with a few exceptions. So the background is gray. Okay. Now in outer space, we know that uh, everything's just, just blackness. Okay. So I want to click on this world icon up here for our world properties and our background color right here. Bring this all the way down and now it's blackness. Okay. But in two steps, just in adding two image textures to a sphere, we now have the surface of the moon, which is really kind of a neat thing. Uh, so that is how you work with uh, NASA data in Blender. And uh, in the next video, we will we'll position lighting and we'll talk about tidal locking and why we always see the same side of the moon uh, relative to where we are uh, on the surface of a curved planet. So get up, get a stretch, get a bend, and we'll see you in the next one.